Well, people, it's friggin' my Friday, your Wednesday here on Vlogging Life. Currently 2.44, I got up late today because some idiot forgot to set his alarm. I'd be the idiot. And uh, got up at 2 o'clock and went, oh shit, well, guess we're not going shopping today because uh, I got up too late. And the plow came by like 74 times last night because I live on a bus route, so I gotta make sure the buses of the uh, city transit can run. So, I didn't get a chance to get out there because I had to go and shovel the driveway. And uh, for my next clip, uh, I got this great idea of putting my GoPro Hero 2. Uh, oh, this thing here. Put the old, uh, this thing here, the old GoPro Hero. Uh, oh, fuck. 2. Onto, um, oh yeah, onto uh, the shovel. And uh, this next segment I like to call This is what a shovel sees while I push snow. <laughs> audio out of it and added music into the background and I sped it up obviously because freak sakes the original video is uh, seven minutes and 30 seconds long that's how long it takes you know it takes me longer to blow the driveway mind you the snowblower does a better job but uh, it takes me longer to blow the driveway than it did to shovel it but I think if I were to shovel instead of snow blow all the time my driveway wouldn't have those two camel humps in it where the tires are eh? it wouldn't have that problem because uh, while well, it would I just need to shovel it before I drive over it because all I'm doing is packing snow down in a tire groove pattern and it's cocking over the program big times but uh, yeah so it took me seven minutes and 30 seconds to basically grab the shovel from the garage get out there, push all the snow around, lift it onto the snow banks, clear the end of the driveway, and be done with it all. That's not too bad. Now, mind you, the end of the driveway is pretty cocked. It's all friggin' solid brick ice. Like, I'm gonna have to grab my long handled round mouth and get out there and just start attacking it. Like, like I said before, if I had an ice chipper, it'd be a lot easier because they're so sharp that you can use it like a razor blade and you can literally shave the snow down. You can just, you know, just drag it along and just shave the snow humps down and then grab your shovel and scoop up all the loose snow and fire it into the bank, but I don't have one of those. Uh, tomorrow I gotta do some shopping. Um, I wanna go get that piece of doweling for that friggin' wiper thing in the car, and I'm probably just gonna make a handle out of hockey tape or something, I don't know, we'll figure it out. And I need to buy a long piece of doweling and some sort of a bracket, because uh, this light on this tri- like look, there's the tripod leg, there's the leg of my chair. If I back up too far, I hit that all the time. I'm banging into that stupid thing all the freaking time. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, this whole assembly and get it out of here. I'm gonna bring this back out into the garage. I found the head for the tripod. It's sitting over in uh, that brown cabinet, so not a big deal. I'm gonna put that back together, make that back into a tripod, and I'm gonna bolt a piece of doweling right to the desk, and we're gonna get that really high up in the air 
and out of the view of the camera so that uh, I can basically set this friggin' set up and not have like two tripods here taking up all this in this real estate. I'm almost tempted to uh, get a second piece of doweling or get a piece to hook onto the doweling and, and grab the head for this tripod and uh, hook that head onto the doweling and then I can not use this tripod in here. I can save this tripod for another project. Or just go to the thrift store and buy a shitty tripod and be done with it. Or over in the yonder region here, I have um, I have these things. These things. You know, they got the 3M tape onto it, and then uh, these swivel mounts, and this screws into your camera. This is like if you wanted to put a camera mount in your car. You know, you totally can. So I bought these off of Deal Extreme. I can't remember the price. I think they were like two bucks a piece or something. I bought two of them, but the other one is broken, so I might use that one and modify it to work if I could ever find. Oh. Oh, there's the attachment for my projector to hook it up to my computer. Cool. Um, I got another one of these uh, USB -E darts in here. Freaking light bulb. Just take that out for now. Probably shouldn't have been touching the glass. I thought I had another one of those. Yeah, there it is. Now I got this one here, but this one here is broken. You see, it's broken. But uh, I figure with enough hot glue, I can probably just make it work. You know, I can just make it work. But see how bent it is and shit? Like. This is how it came to me. This is the problem buying stuff from Deal Extreme and Fast Tech. You never get good shit, but I also have a... Okay, so I don't have an, a 32 gig card in my phone. I have an 8 gig because there's the 32 gig there. Oh, I got a bunch of shit in this desk. That's awesome. You know, I could always uh, jury rig something up that'll work and that I can stab my camera onto because, like I said, if I get the GoPro... This thing, actually, I want to take it out of here because I, I do want to use that. This is that USB hub. Bought it like a year ago. Still haven't put it to work. Freak sakes. But uh, what am I hitting? Oh, that. Nope. Okay, what the hell's banging? Is this light bulb? Yup. Stupid light bulb. But basically, then I could have this whole setup and it wouldn't be a problem. You know, the camera would be set up and everything would be good. Or I could even buy more of these friggin' dollar store tripods and uh, rig one of these to the actual dowling so it holds the camera and I won't need any tripod. Like, I got a bunch of my things up here while I'm at work tonight. I'm gonna design something and then tomorrow we're gonna assemble it and we're gonna set it up because I got a couple more commenting on comments to make and get those on the internet and go from there. So I got a lot of shit I wanted to do today but can't and and uh, I'm still freaking tossing and turning on my buying a GoPro because like this camera works not too bad. Sure, it's not true HD. Uh, to do true true HD, you need a, at least a 1.98 megapixel uh, sensor. This camera here is 1.54 megapixels, so it kind of fakes 1080p a little bit or a lot of bit. Anyway, the only thing I liked about this camera was the headlamp because without it, it just you know it really has to work and change the ISO and all that shit to make my face glow. Where with it, it really sheds light on the subject, you know? It's friggin' awesome. But, for commenting on comments, see, I never used the light on here because I got enough light over there to deal with that problem, right? But, that'll be tomorrow's plan. We'll figure that out and uh, get that all straightened out and whatnot and stuff and junk and shit and go from there. So, uh, as for today, I gotta get to work in about, an, uh, about a half an hour. I'm just having some uh, some eats right now before we bail. I just saw my phone go off. Got a sext message. A sext message. So, um, right on. But uh, I'll chime back in when I got something to chime about. Holy shit! I went out and checked the mail because I forgot to do it when I was uh, when I was uh, GoPro shoveling there. <laughs> And uh, got my hydro bill for uh, February, uh, due on March 21st, I already paid it, but holy shit man, I am so broke right now. Um, I don't think I'm going to be getting a GoPro because I had to dip into the GoPro funds to pay this one. Like normally it's hundred and between 110 to 130 bucks a month to run hydro in this house. Uh, hydro is what we call our power. Uh, we call it hydro up here. You probably heard like Rickham or Bloke or Pug call it hydro, not electricity, just that's the Canadian thing or at least an Ontario thing uh, but anyway uh, normally it's about 110 to 130 bucks depending on how bad the furnace has been running all month and uh, this month my bill was three hundred and like sixty two dollars I was like holy fuck what happened and I checked the usage and the usage was, was a bit higher than last month but what, what what's going on and then I checked out the internet here uh, my buddy invited me to a page, I didn't even realize he did that, called um, Hydro One Enough is Enough, because people in rural areas are paying, like, wow, that's ridiculous. Okay, I'm going to show you a bill here from somebody else. Like, really? That's a lot to spend on Hydro for one month. 
balance forward, zero. So that shows that they paid off their hydro bill. This is what, what Hydro One expects them to pay at the end of the month. So I don't know about you, but if you guys know of any jobs that are paying $25,505 a month, let me know because I need that job. But it's like down here it shows the kilowatts used. Average electricity, uh, number of days, oh this is for the year. Okay, they're paying, oh no, this is for half, uh, half a year, sorry. This is how much they gotta pay for half a year. So you take that and divide it by six, and that's their monthly bill. Like, that is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Now this person lives in a rural area. They live out in, uh, actually just south of here. Not very far from here. Probably around a 20 minute drive. This is ridiculous. Like, who can pay this? And I'm coming across all sorts of shit like that. So then I, I got digging and got digging and got digging, trying to find out what's going on. And um, I came across another post, which probably got pushed down because there's a lot of pissed off people in rural areas totally getting co uh, cocked over by this, getting right frigged over by these bills. And um, it turns out what's happening is that stupid bitch that we have for a premier in Ontario, little Catherine, Catherine Wynn there, or Kathleen Wynn, so Sorry. Um, okay, I'm trying to find the post. I can't find the post anywhere. This is ridiculous. Ba -ba -ba. I can't find it. I can't find it anywhere. But basically what's happening is uh, Kathleen Wynn there decided that it'd be a good idea to sell our hydro to other places. Like we're selling to Quebec, we're selling outside of Canada to Michigan, we're selling outside of Canada to New York. And they did the math and they're selling about $162 million worth of hydro. I think it was million, it could have been billion. I might be wrong, but I know 162 was the number. So we're just gonna call it $162 million worth of hydro to these other locations and only getting paid like 80 million dollars for it. So there's already a deficit. It's like, why are we undercutting? If it's a hundred, if, it, if the value is 162 million and those bitches want our hydro, then we charge them 162 million. We don't sit there and cut it in half. Because what she did was, she's selling it for 80 million and then expecting the rest of Ontario, especially the Northern continent of Ontario to pay off the other 82 million. It's like, you, we can't do that. And that's what they're doing. And there's nothing we can do to stop it because, you know, okay, well fine, I'm not gonna pay my hydro. All of a sudden you have some dick at your door saying, oh, by the way, bud, uh, hydro's been shut off because uh, you didn't pay your bill. This time of year, the last thing you need is your hydro cut off because, you know, your furnace doesn't run, your house gets cold, your uh, pipes explode, and guess what? You're frigged. I'm just going to put the rest of my food in the fridge because I didn't eat it all. But um, this is the problem that we face up here in Ontario. This is the reason why we need a better government. A better government in the office. We've done the conservative thing. And you know what? The conservatives were better than the liberals. Um, sure, the conservatives made life hard by increasing taxes and blah blah blah, but they were putting the money towards the deficit to try and make Ontario a debt-free freaking place. Kathleen Wynne so far has spent so much money that all the work the Conservatives have done is gone. It's, it's, it's worse. We're in a worse state now than we've ever been. <laughs> it's freaking ridiculous. It's like, okay, we tried the Conservative thing, worked, everybody got mad, it worked, but whatever. We tried the Liberal thing, not working, Ruined. We're ruined. So, why don't we try the NDP thing now? Why don't we... That was me, guys. That wasn't your Facebook. That was me. Um, why don't we try the NDP thing now? Wouldn't that be the logical choice? We gave the other two a chance. They both pissed us off. Let's give the new guy a chance so they can piss us off. So we can just decide governments are stupid and be done with it. I honestly have no freaking idea how anybody can afford those kind of bills. I don't know how anybody's going to afford be able to keep their house powered and running anymore around here with that kind of nonsense like if you live in the north and this is the reason why I said it before and I'll say it again <laughs> she looks so cute look at the face look at that face he's so cute I said it before and I'll say it again this is why Ontario needs to be split in two anything south when the freaking highway turns from a highway 11 to highway 400 that should not be classified as, that, that, that's where Southern Ontario begins, right? So Ontario needs to be split where it's Northern Ontario, Southern Ontario. 
We got, did I grab any juice? Nope, I'm an idiot. Um, so Northern Ontario would be anything from like Aurelia up. Southern Ontario is anything from Barry down. At the moment it turns in to that 400, you are now entering Southern Ontario. And that should be a province of its own. And we should be a province of our own because our needs are different than their needs. And they outpopulate us. And the Liberals and the Conservatives know if you want to win, you just got to offer something that benefits the South because fuck the North, we can't beat them. I honestly think the entire North, the population of the entire North is equal to that of Toronto because Toronto is about 4.5 million people and the North is full of small communities, lumber communities and mining communities and stuff. So we need to separate Ontario, split it in half and make it Northern and Southern so we can have our own freaking premier that worries about our shit they can have their own premier that ruins their shit and life will be good and the tire is still full of air oh this feels weird it's currently minus three degrees out which is freaking awesome and uh i got the window open but yeah i was chatting with my buddy and he's like you know what it would be cheaper for me to buy like a 10,000 watt or 20,000 watt diesel powered generator put a really big fuel tank on it, get some batteries and stuff, like some power storage, and convert his house over to 12 volt and power it himself. But now they wanna pass this law in Canada about solar energy and that you have to pay, like if you're off the grid, you have to pay a tax to be off the fucking grid because the government's all like, well, we're not gonna make money off you, we're gonna make money off you. And it's like, holy shit. Like, if you try to be off grid, man, the startup cost is expensive. Like, solar panels and some way to store the power, whether it's lithium ion, nickel cadmium, fucking car batteries, you know, the alkaline, nickel base, whatever, gel cells. All that shit costs a lot of money. Like, one car battery is a hundred bucks and that's not gonna last very long. Mind you, it's gotta be a deep cycle. You don't wanna be putting any old fucking dirty car battery in your basement and making it a power cell because we all know car batteries don't deep cycle that well. So you get yourself a bunch of deep cycle batteries, which is probably gonna set you back around five, seven grand for a decent amount of them so that you can have plenty of surplus power on days that are just not sunny or not windy or, you know, at night. Looks like this guy knows the struggle too. Is that a PT Cruiser? I don't know if that was a PT Cruiser or a Mini. That's a Mini. But um, no, it's like you can't win right now because of win. You can't win because of win. Hashtag win for win? No. I'm gonna start that hashtag. Can't win because of win or can't win because of win or something like that. Like this is getting a little out of hand. If you can make electricity, there shouldn't be the government stepping in there and fucking forcing you to dash out dimes that you already paid for your own power generation. You're now trying to be more independent and get away from public domain. You shouldn't have to pay extra funds or be penalized because you're not part of the problem, which is all the douchebags in the summer with their air conditioners when it's only like friggin' 20 C out and they're like, oh fuck, crank the air conditioner, you gotta put her up to friggin', you gotta get the house at 62 Fahrenheit, you know, you gotta freeze the house. And then in the winter, they're like, holy shit, it's so cold outside, we gotta run her at 80, run the house at 80. It's like, well, 62 is good in the summer, why isn't it good in the winter, bud? You know, what the fuck's really going on? That's another thing that burns my dick. But it's because of like Toronto really consumes the power on the friggin' in the summer months. They really, ro really rock the power, which is why they have rolling brownouts to re basically knock out the AC so the power consumption drops a little bit because, freak's sakes, they gotta stop. I think I did that thing where I leave my phone at the house. Whoops, I don't know, it kinda burns my dick. Like worse than having syphilis probably. It's just, like I, I, I don't even wanna ask Pug One what his hydro bills are like because he lives in a rural area and he's probably just getting pounded from like I can imagine his bills because he does things like arc welding uh, I think his arc welder is 220 volt though so that might not be too bad like my arc welder being 110 volts 
it probably likes to suck on the friggin' hydrometer pretty hard. And uh, you know, like his house, well, he's wood heated too, so he doesn't have any electricity for his heating. So his bills might not be as bad. It's the people who are like living in the rural areas and have those like electric baseboard heaters or just electric heat in general. That shit, yeah, super reliable, never fails as long as you can afford to pay your hydro bill and the power doesn't go out. But like Pug's place, it's all wood heated, not it's a uh, wood stove, so he's fine there. Like that's all fucking just heat being consumed by burning the shit out of things. And his air exchangers are powered by the thermals, so yeah, I don't even think he has that problem. But like still, he probably gets taxed out the ass because he lives in a rural area and they're probably doing the same to him that they're doing to me and charging this like fucking delivery charge that's absurd. Like no explanation why it's so high, just here's the delivery charge. No reason. You gotta pay that or we're coming out and we're fucking coming out with bolt cutters and chopping the wire down. Like done and done. It always used to cost me 110 to 120 bucks a month for hydro and 80 to 100 dollars for natural gas and the so I pay equal building on the natural gas though so that's always 90 bucks. Because in the summer the only time I use natural gas is for the hot water tank. That thing's natural gas heated. And in the sun like in the winter that hot water heater it's always coming on. It's always coming. Well the new one's not too bad. The old one was really bad. I swear that fucking thing ran 24-7, 365. So my gas might go down this year or next year because uh, I think it was around this time last year that that hot water tank exploded and my buddy came over and replaced it. I'm pretty sure of that. I'd have to check the videos, but I think it was around this time last year when that happened. And uh, yeah, that really sucked. That was a freaking mess. But um, yeah, so this new one doesn't come on as much because it actually has proper insulation, you know, double barreled friggin' probably styrofoam or pink flamingo or some shit in there, and it's not too bad. But, uh, like, come on, guys. 25 grand for six months of fucking hydro? Are you, like, just off your rockers? That's what some people make in six months without buying food, paying mortgage, and all the other necessities and stuff and junk and high insurance for cars and houses and, you know, all that jazz. It's really ridiculous. I don't know how the hell those people can survive. You know, I was considering getting a place out in Pawan Boston this one time. My buddy knew of a lady selling a house with uh, 100 acres of property on it, like farmland, you know, in case I wanted to start up my own, uh, like Adam's farm. You know, I thought about it and thought about it, and then I got thinking more and more and more, and I'm thinking, yeah, but you know what? The insurance would be expensive, especially for doing stupid things out there, like crashing cars and modding cars and driving fast through a track and stuff, and somebody gets hurt, and all of a sudden I'm fucking liable because. People are dicks, you know, they find out, oh, I got hurt on his property. If I sue him for a million dollars, I won't have to work anymore. I'm gonna sue him. You know, and insurance would be like, well, okay, you're getting sued because he hurt, his, hurt himself on your property. What was he doing? Oh yeah, he was driving his Cavalier really fast down the road and fucking hit a tree. It's like, why was he driving his Cavalier on your property? Oh, we got a racetrack. Oh, well, your insurance doesn't cover that, so now you're not covered. So now I gotta find a million dollars somewhere to pay this guy's settlement, you know what I'm saying? And stuff like that, that it's like, no, no. Because people are dicks, you know, they say they won't sue you. But the moment the money gets tight and money talks, they're going to fucking sue you. Like, it'd be nice to have a place, like, I'd love to have my own little cottage somewhere, like up in Martin River or, you know, somewhere uh, near a lake where, like, Oreo and I could fuck off for a weekend, go hang out there, you know, nice little cottage, fires, you know, have a couple friends over, get a case of beer, have a couple beers around the campfire, shoot the shit, have the mini bikes up there, go for romps during the day, just, just have a good old time. That'd be nice, but that's a pipe dream that requires you to, uh, to have stability in the workplace. <laughs> oh shit, sorry. Okay, good, I didn't splash. I didn't, I didn't hit it bang on. If I would have hit that puddle bang on, man, that guy back there would have had a bad freaking day. It would have been like dumpy all over again get this shift over with we got friggin 14 minutes before I have to punch in and talk to people about how they broke their computer and explain to them how to fix it oh what fun it is to talk to customers who don't know shit but yeah I could I could just imagine that if I lived in a rural area with all the technology that I have running how much it would cost me a month that and the other thing that stopped me from even considering that was when I called all the internet providers to see what they had for service in that area and the best I could get was net spectrum wireless one meg down a fucking eighth of a meg up 
And I was like, ha, yeah, that's gonna work. You know, being a YouTuber uploading friggin' half gig files to gig files nonstop, like, Right now, Skaven Games is getting flooded with over 70 gigs of data. If I had an eighth of a meg up to do that, it'd probably take me seven months to get that data up there. Probably. It'd be like, your upload will take 700 minutes. Jesus, man, I got like, no power. No power right now. Friggin' tires are just slipping underneath me. Looks like we, uh, looks like half job day here at uh, the old parking lot for snow removal. Half job day. Three parking spots that are for ONTC trucks, and the ONTC trucks are parked in regular parking spots. Oh, that's fucking reserved for the the nurses. Oh man, I really hate this place right now. Can I park beside this EEP, or is that reserved for customers? Fuck them. I'm a customer. Well, I was until I quit. Well, that reminds me, I gotta bring my modem in. Oh, I forgot my fucking modem again. I'm gonna get billed for that. Son of a bitch. But anyway, I'm at work now. I gotta get the shift over with and then carry on. So I'm gonna shut the vlog down here. Hopefully you enjoyed the uh, GoPro shoveling because that was kind of funny to make. I thought about that one last night while I was uh, playing Grand Theft Auto with uh, Jet Wash and them. I thought about that and I just didn't mention it. I was like, that's fucking hilarious. We're gonna roll with that. But anyway, people, I'm gonna shut her down here. So thanks for watching my video. Uh, Hopefully you enjoyed it big times. And if you did, give that like button a click. Any questions, comments, concerns, uh, uh, down below they go. And until next time, I got the worst gas ever, but keep on vlogging.